everyone. I wanted to uh, chat a little bit about my sketching adventures. So uh, this Sunday I was, uh, I had like three hours to kind of burn in uh, town, the town near me, which is called uh, Graz, not really important, but well, it is maybe if you want to look it up, it has some very pretty uh, buildings in it and I decided to be brave and go do some sketching out in the world in the streets now um, I did a video showing what I took to my uh, trip to Israel but and I did uh, like watercolor and sketch there but it was always uh, in my room or hotel or something like that I have uh, I guess I'm a bit embarrassed to sketch out in the world I don't like to draw attention to myself and I also don't consider my kind of sketching on location skills to be so amazing that um, yeah I'm kind of embarrassed if people see them but I did want to um, you know do that so I decided to be brave and not doing something because you're scared is never good unless you know you're scared for good reason <laughs> but <laughs> Fear is uh, sometimes very good. So I'll just show you quickly, quickly what I took. Um, I couldn't decide <laughs> between, I wasn't uh, like traveling light, but you know, it was just like a walk in town and my car was closed. It's not like a whole day of walking around and carrying this stuff. So I have this palette that I set up ages and ages and ages ago and I didn't really uh, use it like I set it up for I don't know I think it was also a trip or something and I, it has a really nice selection of colors uh, first of all it fits quite a bit and the palette is great and there's tons of mixing space um, and uh, a lot of the colors that I included are kind of more granulating colors which I really think that's where you know the wind is blowing for me. Um, I just really love the way that granulating colors look on uh, rough paper. I think that texture really adds a lot and kind of adds detail without me actually having to do anything. Uh, especially when, you know, sketching sometimes or a lot of the time it's like on smaller scale so that granulation really shows up. So I decided just as a last minute thing to take this also with me. <laughs> and then this is a palette that I set up. It's mostly or yeah, it's it's mostly the Aquarius uh, watercolors, uh, but it has a few from White Nights. And it's also a pretty granulating palette. Uh, this is, you know, kind of more basic because there are only 14 colors here. I managed to get seven in each row. These are full pans. Uh, and those here, it's like, you know, you have to squeeze it from a tube. I really like being able to, like, switch uh, the pans around. But then I really like the other one. So there, there's never, you know, you can't have everything, it seems. <laughs> so I think played with both of them but I think mostly I used the uh, this one and then I took like a few brushes that uh, I carried kind of everything in this uh, Windsor & Newton travel bag so some rags uh, pencils that I didn't end up using this was actually the only pen that I used and I love it it's the uh, platinum carbon ink pen it's uh, Japanese uh, this one I think is like the extra fine tip it is like super super fine and it's beautiful I love it and the ink is uh, water resistant uh, I love this and you know these like come with the set so a water container um, it wasn't perfect I think I'm just going to get like one of those collapsible 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 you know the cups that collapse <laughs> I know Fabel Castell has uh, a cute pink one. I think I'll pick that up. And here I have water that I need to pour out because they're dirty. And then I grabbed a few brushes. Actually, the only one that I ended up using was this number six uh, Paul Rubens brush for now. Um, so, you know, it's good. I think the more I manage to do this, the better I'll get with really limiting down my supplies. So let's do the big... 
<laughs> reveal don't expect anything much as I said this is like pretty new to me so I didn't like I don't feel that uh, you know I'm really good at this but this was just playing a little bit with a color palette and I just want to show you a few things um, like these beautiful mixes here this is ultramarine blue and Naples yellow and then this is like another yellow but I actually I felt like the mixes were close enough and this one had more intensity so I still stuck with the Naples yellow and then these are the other colors that I had in the palette but then I uh, replaced this black with this one which is called the Aquarius black and it pretty much looks exactly like the Daniel Smith um, lunar black so you can see that it has insane granulation and this I don't know I think maybe I labeled the name incorrectly or something because I labeled this as the Aquarius paints gray but to me it looks exactly like the Daniel Smith moon glow so I have to check that maybe I made a mistake and then these are like also some really pretty mixes I love the granulation look at that so I was just testing it and here I was painting, like sketching uh, this church building. Um, it's not finished. I could go back and add a couple more layers, but this is all I felt like doing on location. I think I need to kind of work a little bit on the color of patina. Um, I love that color. It's like I'm super attracted to uh, such buildings but I'm not sure that I'm completely happy with my watercolor choice here. So I think this one is a little bit closer. You can see, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but this one is slightly bluer. And you know, I'm not as fussy with like the, the neutral colors of the building or something like that, but I really want to get that patina color um, right. So please leave me any comments, tips, suggestions. I'd love to hear what you use. And here I was just playing around a little bit with um, mixing the colors, playing a bit with the, you know, the teals, a little bit of yellows and greens to see what I come up with. And then this was in the coffee shop and I kind of want to, um, you know, add watercolors. So maybe I'll do that uh, on camera. But I really liked it. Uh, so I was just sitting in a coffee place and I did this. And then I think this really speaks to me, like picking out details as opposed to like a whole scene. Um, I don't know. This was kind of fun for me. And uh, I really, really love the more sketchy style. So you can see this cup it has very, very crooked lines. I really like that. So I'm thinking maybe I will um, color these in a little bit. So maybe we can do that uh, together and see what happens. This is the Arteza uh, sketchbook and I have to say I really enjoyed it. I felt like the, the color moved nicely on it. I wasn't like struggling to spread it around. Uh, you can see I think maybe it's uh, depending on the different sides of the paper. I think one side is a tiny bit smoother. This seems more textured to me than this, but then this also seems a little bit textured, so I'm not sure. Um, but like I felt like here the granulation was more obvious than here, but it could be just also the, the colors. I don't know, I think it granulated a bit better on this side than on this. Yeah, so I have to like play with it a little bit uh, more, but I, I am enjoying it. Uh, even though it's like a big size, I would consider it's A4 size and I would consider that a little bit big to do something like sketching outside. Um, but I didn't mind it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Okay, I'm talking too much. So let's get painting. Hey there, I thought it would be just, you know, easier, easier, easier and faster to do a time lapse. So that's what we're doing. And I decided this time to focus on uh, this Aquarius palette. So I will put links to my kind of first impressions 
of the Aquarius watercolors. These are from Poland. Uh, they're really lovely, very kind of juicy. Some of the colors are not like as punchy as I would necessarily want, but it's also the the specific pigments that I'm using here. I think they're a little bit softer than what I tend to use in my regular go-to rainbow palette, which every color there pretty much uh, packs a punch. So um, yeah, but they are lovely, very, very affordable, very comparable to White Knights. I've spoken about them in uh, several videos. So I just, I'm just adding some color. I'm not sure I know too much <laughs> what I'm doing here. <laughs> this is not something that I do a lot. And I definitely want to kind of explore this more. I have several urban sketching books that I do like. And I, I really like having uh, a, a reference in book form. But I'm also thinking maybe I should take some online classes. Probably not going to happen in the super near future, but maybe in the fall. Uh, I would love to take a Liz, Liz Steele course, but those are quite pricey. So I think I'll have to think about it and maybe check out places like uh, Skillshare, where, you know, you pay like a monthly fee and you have uh, a really large selection of teachers. Um, places like that, like Skillshare, they can be a hit or miss, but there's no doubt that you get really a ton, ton, ton of content and variety for a very low price. And so I think for me, there is room for both of these kind of online learning platforms. Uh, but I do prefer when possible, and not just because I also have an online school, but I do prefer to uh, buy classes directly from uh, a certain artist. It's just that uh, a lot of them are, you know, really expensive and it is quite a commitment. And if you uh, sign up for something like Skillshare or the Artist Networks Network TV, which is amazing as well, I would say probably the level, like in general, across the board is higher on the Artist Network TV, uh, as opposed to Skillshare, where there's like a really huge variety, although there are some fantastic teachers there as well. I just want to make that clear. Um, you know, that is a commitment that um, more of us can afford. So like $20 a month or something like that. Uh, Skillshare always offers all kinds of deals. So it's worth to hunt down for one. But yeah, I definitely feel like I need, I don't know, a little bit of guidance. Um, maybe more actually with the watercolors, less about the sketching. I'm not sure. I'm kind of just, you know, dipping my toes in the urban sketching water. So we'll see where that takes me. But for sure, I enjoyed it. And I really tried to use a lot of like granulating colors because that's what I really, really enjoy. Um, I just love the way that they separate on the paper. And make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell because I really am planning to post a lot of watercolor related videos this month. July is watercolor month. And I think this is a good opportunity to focus on this wonderful, wonderful uh, medium. I think I'll also attempt to create my own sketchbook because... I really want to use a lot of loose sheets and paper blocks that I have. And I think that is the best way for me to use them because I do enjoy working in a sketchbook. And I also need to figure out which supplies I'm taking on my cup upcoming California trip. I want to do a dedicated video. I started filming it already on choosing a color palette. And I really hope you can give me some great suggestions on some, you know, specific colors and pigments that you think would work for a California trip um, and Disney included. <laughs> so that is a coming uh, video coming soon, uh, hopefully in the next uh, days or week or so. And 
yeah, I think at this point I started to add just a little bit of shadows. Um, you know, a lot of this is like very suggestive and sorry, it's it's off camera. I didn't notice. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> um, I think kind of less is more sometimes when adding watercolors to these type of sketches. I'm guessing one needs to be, I don't know, quite selective in adding watercolors. So yeah, I'm looking forward to exploring this more. I had a lot of fun creating this. I hope you enjoyed as well. And I will see you in another video soon. Make sure you enter the giveaway for my new class. Thanks for watching. Bye.